I, um, I would like to dwell in my, in my address um, to, the, to the direct link and consequences uh, of human rights, their violation, and the stability and peace of the international uh, community. Uh, therefore, plead for um, a strong approach against these violations. As a diplomat, I'm a practitioner. We operate on a daily basis with Realpolitik, explicitly present in a series of world, regional, and even domestic events that states are called to face and comp cope with constantly. Therefore, I must take into consideration the famous quote of Hans Morgenthau polit in Politics Among Nations, that international politics, like all politics, is a struggle for power. With the international legal instruments that states have developed to regulate and preserve order in the international community, we must oppose the attempts of the rule of power by permanently and constantly applying and safeguarding the rule of law. Thank you. Honorable Judge, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we are all aware of, the 20th century witnessed some of the most heinous acts against humanity. Two world wars, the Holocaust, communist totalitarian regimes, as well as huge traumas of the various conflicts of the recent years. All these dramatic happenings involve systematic violations of the fundamental human rights. Thankfully, awareness and responsibility of both civil societies and polit politics, paralleled by prominent bodies worldwide of law professors and legal experts, developed what we are all proudly um, able to call today international law, international human rights law, and humanitarian law. While witnessing the theoretical debates among the law scholars about the relationship between these specific parts of international law, practice undeniably shows that there is a strong connection between violations of human uh, rights and order and peace in the international community. The consequences are death, grief, migration, homeless, and orphaned children, to name only some of the dramatic disturbances created by the human rights violations. These kind of grave humanitarian problems are all over the world and wait for a solution. In the last years, the number of people in need of humanitarian assistance grew to unprecedented levels. Domestic and international conflicts organized crime, poverty, severe violations of human rights are among the causes of these evolutions. As highlighted in the Romanian pleading before this very international court some years ago, and I quote, international law is the prominent sovereign that all actors and actions of the international community should follow and respect. The inspired words of Nicolae Titulescu, whose distinguished effigy can be seen close to the Peace Palace in the garden, come to my mind. He used to define the state sovereignty comme étant gravé d'une servitude internationale en faveur de la paix et du droit international. Unquote. I think that these inspired words should guide us all in fulfilling the prevalence of international law at national and international level. The sovereign state is called to watch upon rights and obligations and enforce international law under all these aspects and needs. This complex interdependence between human rights, democracy, and rule of law has been confirmed by the realities of the last years. Proactive approach should pre prevent violations, and it is by far better than 
when racist, xenophobic, discriminatory behaviors leading to domestic tensions and eventually war have been already installed. Human rights violation of multiple kinds may infiltrate quietly, insidiously, when allowed into our societies. We unfortunately witness nowadays worldwide an escalation of atrocities. The assistance offered by the UN system in close cooperation with states, international NGOs and international donors are strongly involved in the endeavor to ensure the survival for thousands of people. The Romanian response in this respect was the creation in 2008 of the Timisoara Emergency Transit Center for Refugees. The first institution of its kind in the world, established together with the United Na uh, Nations Commissioner on Human Rights and the International Organization for Migration. The center proved to be a concrete response offering safety to persons in urgent need of international protection and thus creating a humanitarian space. Honorable Judge, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Justice must be done and impunity must be reprehended in all cases of violence against human rights. And all those guilty must face a fair trial when, even if they did not offer what uh, that to the, their victims, because law must always prevail over naked power. Not far than last week, on January 27, as uh, the Honorable Judge already mentioned, we commemorated the victims of the Holocaust. We mark 70 years since the liberation of the concentration camp in Auschwitz, a date of such powerful significance on the history of the last century, also symbolic in relation to the international efforts to fight against all forms of discrimination, anti-Semitism, racism, and xenophobia. I cannot but remind once again how important it is to keep in our minds and souls the lessons of these atrocities and unite our efforts against any premise of their recurrence. Romania took important steps to condemn Holocaust and anti-Semitism and will continue to act in accordance with this commitment. As a recognition of my country's efforts in this respect, in 2016, so next year, Romania will take over the presidency of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. This is an important responsibility to be carried out and represents the recognition of our efforts to keep alive the Holocaust remembrance through legal and administrative instruments developed at international, national and local level. We are grateful for the trust and confident that during our presidency, we will put in place an efficient and prestigious program of the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance for all of us, for the sake of peace and humanity. Honorable Judge, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the use of international law is the core principle of Romanians' foreign policy. My country acts responsibly, aware that international law is and must always be the only instrument for finding solutions to the problems arising on the international arena. This guiding principle is rooted in Romania's contribution to the development of international law and international justice. Please allow me to refer to some of my uh, compatriots that gave um, prestigious contribution to the development of international law. I want to refer in this respect to Nicolae Titulescu, former Minister of Foreign Affairs and twice President of the League of Nations As Assembly, whose visionary contributions are still contemporary. As an example, I just mentioned the concept of the spirituality of borders, which foreshowed the Schengen principles. The Romanian School of International Law has provided a judge to the Permanent Court of International Justice throughout its lifetime, Demetru Negulescu, who wrote with great scientific authority on advisory opinions, 
and the prominent diplomat and law scholar Vespasian Pella, one of the originators of the concept of international criminal law and of the International Criminal Court. That makes me very proud. Inspired by our famous predecessors, we consider that peace and security cannot be achieved without social development and the observance of human rights and democracy. Development is a catalyst for democracy and respect for human rights and at the same time an essential factor for peace and security. On the other hand, the respect for human rights, democracy and the rule of law strengthen the development and create conditions for sustainable peace and security. My country very well understands the need for international solidarity and makes effort to contribute to this process. Based on our experience, national experience, we remain committed to the values promoted and enriched by the United Nations and we support the efforts of the international community to consolidate stability and security strongly rooted in the tolerance and respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms. Allow me to conclude my intervention by reaffirming that the rigorous respect of international law represents a prerequisite for the functioning of the international society, where respect for human rights, of which life is the supreme principle. Peace and security for all the world's citizens is the only option. Our firm belief is that by strengthening the rule of law, we have to embark into a continuous process, both at uh, national and international level. In this line, allow me to quote again Nicolae Titulescu, because I think this is the note we should all um, not end, but to work with in every of our diplomatic, political, or justice actions. Ce n'est que le jour où le droit rayonnera comme un soleil levant dans l'âme de tous les hommes, comme une directive qui guide, comme un impératif catégorique qui s'impose, comme une auto-obéissance qui se confond avec la liberté organisée, que l'humanité aura été sauvée parce que dans la paix que crée l'ordre juridique, l'homme pourra accomplir sa destinée. Is a speech that Titulescu gave in Bratislava in 1937. Thank you very much. <laughs>